In this video, we start a discussion of spectroscopy and spectroscopic techniques that can be used to obtain information about matter. Okay, the definition of spectroscopy is the field of science that uh, studies the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter. Okay, uh, spectroscopic, techni spectroscopic techniques are important uh, in many fields of science, including the life sciences, and uh, many of you at this point have already used uh, UV spectroscopy in the laboratory to obtain information about uh, perhaps proteins or DNA and so forth. Okay, uh, there's various types of spectroscopic techniques that we're actually going to introduce here today, and uh, uh, in follow in future videos, we're going to be uh, providing details for how those various spectroscopic te techniques work. Now, spectroscopy follows naturally from quantum mechanics, and as you will see in just a few uh, minutes, uh, you can't have peaks in the spectrum unless the energy states of matter are quantized, and that's something that we actually have learned in prior videos. Okay, so uh, uh, let's actually summarize the uh, two types uh, of main spectroscopic uh, uh, experiments that you can actually run. Right, so uh, suppose that we have a molecule and we analyze uh, how uh, its energy states are. Okay, so uh, this could be any type of energy states in that molecule, and we'll make an extension of that a little bit later on, but suppose that you have these three energy states. Uh, this is E1, this is E2, this is E3, and again it could be uh, many more energy states, this is just kind of a place holding for any type of energy states uh, that a molecule or an atom can have. Alright, so uh, generally the system is going to be in the lowest energy state. Okay, so uh, in an absorption uh, experiment, which is what is most commonly done, absorption. What happens is that uh, we shine photons, and what will happen is that, well, uh, if the energy of these photons is coincident or resonance with the difference in energy between two quantum energy states, then what will happen is that we will satisfy the resonance condition, okay, and the photon might be absorbed. And if the photon is absorbed, then uh, uh, the transmitter is not 100%. Some of those photons uh, uh, are, not, are not transmitted. Okay, they get absorbed by the sample, and then that shows us up as an absorbance, as a peak in our spectrum. Okay, so the end point of this experiment would be a, a situation in which you have uh, the same energy states. These don't change, but the system is now in this excited state. Right? So the energy that is required for the system to transition from a low energy state to this high energy state that comes directly from the photon according to this resonance or Bohr condition. Okay, so this is exactly what goes on when you do an ultraviolet visible experiment in which these energy states actually correspond to uh, electronic energy states like orbitals. Okay? Uh, this is a type of, of uh, absorption experiment, uh, but there's actually other types of uh, spectroscopy that we can do. Uh, a different type is called emission spectroscopy, and this is something that is not uh, as common as absorption spectroscopy, but it's also very useful. So suppose that we have the same system, okay, so uh, we can draw the energy states as this, yep, and that. Okay, let me actually uh, draw them here at exactly the same height as the other states, so that uh, we emphasize that this is exactly the same system as what we had before. Okay, and then that this and this. This is E1, E2, and E3. Well, in emission spectroscopy, what happens is that the system uh, is not in the ground uh, energy state, right? It's not here. Instead, it's in an excited energy state. It could be E2 or it could be E3. And we're not asking the question of how the system has uh, gone there. Maybe um, uh, we have supplied some thermal energy to the, uh, to the sample, and then there's uh, uh, an a uh, non-trivial amount of, of uh, uh, systems that actually absorb the thermal energy from the surroundings okay, and uh, can, can have an energy state E2. Or maybe uh, this starting point, this C2, uh, the system in the excited state, is just what happens when uh, after you actually uh, excite the system from the ground state to this excited state. Okay, so this is an absorption experiment, we finish that absorption experiment, and then we're ready to do an emission experiment. Well, in the emission experiment, what happens is that the system actually uh, might hop back to the ground state, and the energy that it loses when it does so is emitted as a photon. 
that's what happens uh, in emission of spectroscopy. All right, so uh, the resonance condition is that the energy of the photon submitted has to be coincident with the difference in energy between the final state and the initial state, E1 minus A2. Okay, something interesting about emission of spectroscopy is that, of course, because the uh, system is losing energy, okay, this difference in energy should be negative, which would mean that the energy of the photon is negative, which can never be, because photons can't have a negative energy. Okay, so uh, when we talk about emission spectroscopy, then we're going to be taking the absolute value of those energies. Okay, so the reason that this works is because uh, the energy states of atoms and molecules and systems are actually quantized. Okay, you can't have any random value of the energy here. Instead, you either have this energy or that energy. If the energy was not quantized and you could have any energy that you wish, then every single photon uh, with any single energy okay, would be absorbed uh, by the sample potentially. And that means that everything would absorb and you would have a flat line spectrum. Okay, but again, in, in this type of experiments, what happens is that, well, if you come with a photon of an e energy that just puts you here, then no absorption is produced because you can't reach any energy state right there. But if the energy of your photon is there, then uh, the photon is not absorbed. We have 100% transmittance, uh, uh, and uh, you're in the baseline of the spectrum. And unless you actually hit exactly this energy, okay, according to, and you satisfy the resonance condition, no peaks are, are absorbed. Uh, no, no peaks are absorbed. Okay, no photons are absorbed. Okay, and again, the idea is that uh, there has to be a coincidence between the energy of the photon and the difference between the energy states. Now, this type of, of absorption and emission spectroscopy can actually be per performed with any type of photons that you can think of going all the way from X-ray and actually gamma ray all the way to um, radio frequency. Okay, so if we actually order photons in terms of decreasing energy, we have that this is the types of photons that you have in the electromagnetic radiation spectrum, okay, X-ray, UVBC, infrared, microwave, radio frequency, and each one of these uh, types of photons, you can do spectroscopy with them. Okay, mostly it's going to be absorption, but occasionally you can also do emission. For example, in X-ray, what happens is that the energy of X-rays is enough to promote electronic transitions between core energy states, core orbitals, okay, uh, at very low energy orbitals, uh, to high energy orbitals. This will be electronic transitions, but again, the orbitals involved in the transition are going to be uh, uh, from core orbitals to highly uh, energy orbitals. Okay, so this is uh, an electronic transition where uh, the system is rearranging its, electro ele its electrons in orbitals when you shine those photons. Okay, in you of this, okay, you also have electronic transitions. Okay, but these electronic transitions are going to be much lower energy. Okay, so in this case, what will happen is that uh, you will be, this will be perhaps a HOMO, highest or, or occupied molecular orbital, and this might be a LUMO, right? So this might be a pi molecular orbital, and that might be a pi star uh, a molecular orbital, okay, bonding and anti-bonding. Usually, uh, the difference in energy between those two states is in the UVB's range, and that's what you actually interrogate with UV spectroscopy. And in infrared, okay, you already have a much lower energy than UVB's and X-ray, and then you cannot promote any electronic transition. Instead, what happens is that uh, uh, the energy of infrared is, is appropriate to excite uh, molecular vibration. Okay, so the transitions that you're promoting, these energy states will be vibrational energy states. Okay, so let me actually write that down. All right, electronic energy transitions are way uh, too high in energy for infrared, but infrared energy is actually sufficient to excite uh, 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 molecular vibrations. Microwave, you don't have enough energy to excite electrons, you don't have enough energy to excite uh, uh, vibrations, but you have enough energy to excite rotations. Okay, so the transitions are rotational. Okay, and finally, in uh, radio frequency, okay, the energy is very, very, very low, and then what you can actually do is excite nuclear spin states. Okay, I will uh, make sure that we actually talk about what a nuclear spin is. Okay, but uh, uh, for now, we can just say that this is the basis for what we call nuclear magnetic resonance. A NMR and MRI are actually based on radio frequency photons, which are the lowest energy ones. Okay, you increase the energy, microwave photons, you can actually study rotations in molecules, infrared, you can study vibrations, UVBs, you promote electronic transitions, which are low energy, 
and then an X-ray you promote all the current stations that are a very high energy. So again, as you can see, uh, uh, this video simply gives you the basis for what spectroscopic experiment is, and notice that uh, uh, this, all of this uh, knowledge can actually be uh, uh, passed on to any type of spectroscopy uh, that you that you want. Okay, and again, we will be uh, placing quite a bit of attention to uh, or in UVBs, infrared, and then NMR, but again, the basis will be exactly the same. This is what happens in absorption, and that is what happens in emission.